Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Python tutorial, this time on the NPy screen module and library. That's a really cool thing we've been looking at so far that's been allowing us to rapidly create user interfaces for the command line. I've had the documentation up, we're just getting started with learning about this thing. Uh, so now we're moving into the next phase. I wanted to show you really simply this wrapper basic function that gets us in and out of the curses mode, which is the mode that NPy screen works in all the time. So uh, let's read a little bit more about what we're going to be doing next. The things that I want to introduce now are kind of the big overview as to how everything works. And it's cool that it's only in like three components that work hand in hand. There are form objects, there are widget objects, and there are application objects. So the form objects are kind of what you're seeing all the time. They're the screen that's displayed on the screen. Now, widget objects are like the tiny little things that you use, like, you know, a text box or a button or, I don't know, widgets and uh, pieces of the user interface that you actually interact with. The application objects are kind of the big management stuff, like they're the controller in the code that keeps track of everything for you. So, let's actually go ahead and create some of this stuff. The documentation kind of shows you how to build it, and then, of course, using uh, the tutorial that I was hinting at earlier, they're doing some pretty similar stuff that we're doing. So uh, let's just jump into the code and see how we can get it to work. So, like I said, we are uh, still creating forms actually now, because that's one of the crucial aspects of actually getting this stuff to work. That's the screen that's being displayed on the screen. We're still going to use our uh, wrapper basic function to get us in and out of the curses mode now, but pretty soon we're going to get away from this function. Like I said, it's, it's really unnecessary when you're working with actual applications of this stuff. So let's keep our simple function, and let's keep the arguments that we've been using so far, but we'll create something new. Let's say form, that's going to be an object that holds our NPy screen form, and uh, that's exactly what it is. It's an NPy screen dot form. Now note I'm using a capital F here, I'm using a lowercase f for my uh, object name. Now this takes arguments, and the only argument that we can kind of pass in really now that would be beneficial to us is a name. And that's kind of a keyword here. You, you know that I'm using the name and equals. I'm setting an equal as if it were a keyword. So we can say this is going to actually be the header or kind of the title of the form. Um, NPy screen form! Exclamation point. Right? So that's real simple. And uh, let's actually run the code now. Now that we've created it, hopefully uh, we'll get some cool stuff, right? I'll cd into NPy learning and teaching. Oh, I probably should have saved this as 0, 2. I'll control Z everything and then re save this as 0, 1. Get me back into 0, 2. Cool. Now we're ready to roll. I'll just use Python 0, 2 so we don't have to change the permissions on it. And, uh, nothing happens. <laughs> Why is that? We get that same, like, big jump that we saw when we were initializing and getting out of the curses mode earlier, but we created this form. What's up? Why, why isn't anything happening? Well, here's an interesting thing. This is a function, again, that you're probably never going to actually use when you get into the uh, actual application stuff. Like I, like I said up at the top here, these application objects they're going to handle all this stuff for you, but I want to show you how it works in the background, you know, behind the scenes and behind the curtain. So, there are these functions, form.display, and I'm sure you can kind of guess what that will do. That will display our form for us. Now, if I run this, it displays it. <laughs> uh, here, I'll try and resize it. You can see, right up at the top here, we got this, got this kind of gray, black box. There was our title, npyscreen.form, it displayed it, and then it just went away. Well, that's not cool. I wanted it to stay up. I wanted the program to actually keep running, right? So this next one, this next function that I want to show you is edit. And what that will do is it will display the form and, of course, let you edit it as well. Now, you'll notice if I try and run this, there's nothing in our form. <laughs> like there's, there's nothing there. We haven't added any widgets or anything. We got this OK button down at the bottom, down at the bottom right corner, and that's how we can get in and out of our form. We can exit out of it. Cool. So I hit enter, and that's just what got me out of the, got me out of it now. So those are what I wanted to show you as form. 
problems, right? Because I wanted to get to each of the three different things that are kind of crucial in our NPy screen applications. Of course, form objects, widget objects, and application objects. Now, I was telling you application objects are really the big kind of manager of all this stuff, so we'll get into that next, and then, of course, we can add more widget objects and actually learn more about it. So the next tutorial is going to be all about building a better framework rather than using this weird, simple function that we're kind of using as a, as a, as a gateway to get, in, get into our form and calling this wrapper basic function that we don't have to do and even calling this edit function that we don't have to do. So Hopefully you guys can look forward to that in the next tutorial. I know we're still on very, very simple stuff, but there are kind of small components and quirks as to how this library works, and I want to show those off to you so you have a greater understanding for it. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this, and may. Uh, <laughs> what did I just say there? I was going to say, maybe I'll see you in the next tutorial, and then I was going to say, hey, maybe I'll see you in the next tutorial. And it just sounded like may. <sighs> Getting too old for this stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next tutorial.